All right, a very good morning and good afternoon and also good evening. Depends on your location, right? I welcome everyone uh, to our webinar, especially the challenging topic on the challenges for uh, talent management on the organization. This is a very crucial topic. Uh, more or less all the organization are having this challenge, right? So today we'll have our uh, esteemed speaker, Mr. Uh, Ankar Sharma, who is the head of human resource department in organizational development in HCG Group. Mr. Uh, Sharma is also having an extensive experience in the realm of human resource and organizational development. Uh, he is also an advisor of uh, Harvard Business Review uh, Council, right? So I won't take much of time. I would like to uh, invite uh, our esteemed speaker, Mr. Uh, Pankaj Sharma. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, hope I am uh, audible, visible both. Yeah. Very nice. So uh, welcome everyone for this wonderful conversation. I would call uh, this as a conversation because I would like to interact with all of you. So what you can do, you can share your questions, your thought processes, anything, you know, in the chat box. So that uh, simultaneously we will be having, you know, the communication also. We would love to answer your questions. So I'll be sharing uh, more about, you know, the industry perspective and uh, based upon my own uh, academic as well as the corporate experiences. Uh, what we are doing in the current situation in the organization and what are the needs when it comes to the challenges in the talent management in the organizations. I would, uh, uh, let me share a, a screen with all of you. Okay. Uh, is it visible, sir? Yes. Yes, we can see it. All right. All right. Fine. So uh, uh, let me begin with this, that performance management and the talent management, you know, it is going hand in hand with each other. Now, why there is a need to manage the talent or engage the talent? And there are different methodologies which will be helping in terms of, you know, the what kind of uh, population you have in an organization. Understand the populations, if it is uh, all the millennials, all those or people, those who are coming for the new joiners, the the young people or is, is it the middle-aged people or the people those are really very senior people kind of thing so we need to really understand the group of people and accordingly uh, there is a talent management you know the engagement activities or the plan in the entire life cycle of an employee from uh, onboarding to the offboarding higher to retire cycle uh, let me share here that the, the challenges especially if you see broadly across all the organizations uh, uh, putting together all the industries there, uh, the number one is called the high attrition. So this uh, percentage for the high attrition varies from the industry to industry. Even in that particular industry, uh, the various organizations have different number of, you know, the percentage of attrition in the local population. Now, why this is important, you can think about if, if any organization is having 25% attrition. So it means after four years, entire organization is new. Now you can think about, you know, what will going to happen to the long-term strategies of the organization is if someone is planning for five years of plan or maybe 10 years of plan. It means after every four years, you need to take care of the people when it comes to the, the, the population and the employees in an organization. It also has low employee engagement. So when this is again, another a very important challenge, which organization really face for this uh, certain, you know, the employee engagement activities are really required. Various organization, if you see uh, people, they, they would like love to join the organization and they say that, that we don't want to leave the organization. And there is something which is beyond this and behind this, you know, what organization, especially the human resource people, HR people, the functions like talent uh, management or maybe learning and development people, in coordination with the overall management need, what kind of employee engagement plan they are planning for the long term? Low productivity. So when the employee are less engaged, they, it result into the low productivity and you won't uh, successfully achieve the numbers, business goals for the organizations and the entire organization suffers. Interfunctional insubordination and so many things you will find there wherever these things are happening. 
and the employee satisfaction. There is something called the employee satisfaction survey, which we conduct every year. So there is a decline into overall employee satisfaction in an organization. So these are the few common challenges uh, are, are identified across the industry and the, in various organizations. Now coming to the strategies for the talent management. So uh, this is very well known to all of us that the strategic workforce planning is initially really required when you are building an organization, shaping it up, or maybe you are uh, doing this OD kind of exercise. When it comes to OD, uh, organizational development exercise, which has a model which says that uh, you need to, uh, again, you know, uh, revamp the organization, right? And there is a, there is a model which says that uh, you need to uh, look into the each and everything, what is really required as per the population in the organization, as per the current strategies and the strategies where you really wanted to go. So there is an analysis which uh, I recently coined a word, terminology called the MED analysis. So MED analysis is here. This is called this is called the MED analysis. M stands for the mastery and the performance kind of performance which organization is looking from the employee. A is the actual and the difference here, right? So in the in, in various competencies, we will discuss about the competency also here. So this is the the analysis and the gap analysis which they do, and accordingly they 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 plan. So now thinking about the strategic workforce planning, attracting top talent, hiring the right fit for the uh, special roles and the positions in the in an organization accordingly you know conducting the assessment whether they are uh, after hiring they really fit for that or they need to put for some more training interventions learning interventions and then employee engagement activity further help you in terms of um, employee retention and then developing the skills so uh, the there are two things one is the the primary competencies which you are looking for that role and uh, the successful organization, they don't hire people for that, that the role for, for which they are hiring people. So they always look for the future, you know, the perspective in an organization. They are hiring them for the future role. So this is what the progressive mindset and the thinking which normally you will find in the successful organizations. Right. So this is all about competencies. So uh, various roles Sorry, in an sir. organization. If you can look your. The presentation slide that will be better look. All right. Maximize that. Yeah. Thank you. Is it better now? Yeah. Yeah. It looks better now. Yeah. Visible. Okay. 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 So now we we will discuss about the competencies. So let uh, let me let me ask a question to all our uh, you know the, the joiners here, the students. What do you feel? What are the competencies are there for anything? What do you what, what how would you like to define the competencies there? I would like to see some answers in the chat box if people can put in some answers. And you can unmute your mic and respond as well. That's that's also very much okay. Credentials. All right. Uh over. Okay, skills. Charles is writing skills. Great. Uh, can we have a few more inventories here? experience okay leadership okay mm -hmm. management okay uh i really like um, and appreciate the people those are participating in this in this uh, uh, chat box and sharing their thought processes Please say, don't feel that that the, my answer will be wrong. What other people will think? Nobody thinks anything. There is no wrong answers. Whatever comes to your mind, we all are here for the learning. So till the time you are, you wear the learning hat, nothing will going to happen. And rather, I would always appreciate people those who ask questions. They not only you know learn themselves, they always help others also to learn. Fine. So great. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing those who have shared their thoughts and the opinions in the chat box. Let me give you the brief understanding how this competency word terminology and how does it work. So in an organization, we mainly look for the two type of competencies. One is called the functional competencies. When it comes to functional competencies are the competencies where we look for the skills, right? Say, and another one is called the competencies, which is called the behavioral competencies, where which, which plays a very larger role. So there is something called, uh, I, I hope, I believe that you might have gone through something called the skill and will matrix. 
right so in in an organization they put this two by two you know x axis and y axis skill and will and they they, they put four bracket people those who are high in skill high in will they are very productive for the organization for whatever role they are in right so for example let's take an example of a wood cutter a person is cutting a wood going to the forest and his job is to cut as many you know uh, trees from the forest right so number one is his skills in terms of cutting the woods how competent is he is he really knowing that how to hold the x is he really you know understanding that how to cut the, the the tree and another one is called the his behavior in an organization wherever he is working how he is behaving with other people so these are the two different uh, uh, parameters so this is called the the behavioral competencies and the uh, functional competencies where we measure competencies is the group is the, the skill set with which a per person need to really perform into that particular role yes so this is what you know which is the the, the larger and the bigger part of the competency let me share with you here the presentation again all right great so uh, in an organization there are different as per different role there are different competencies are there right so uh, uh, like we define the role and the uh, and the need the talent management career planning and everything but before that do we have the the key result area or maybe something called you know at the initial stage job description so this job description is, is speaks about the initial assessment of that person for that particular job right so the basic requirements are there in the job descriptions right so so after this you know once you hire the person you will again you know check the person do this person have proper knowledge and the competencies to meet the organizational requirement if it does not then we are putting them for the internal training program or the learning interventions and these learning interventions are normally done by the hod's of the organizations because they they understand the organization even in the same industry different organizations have different uh, needs right so this is again you know that if the person is trainable not trainable what are the gaps gap areas are identified and accordingly we put that these people into there so uh, ac accordingly you know that competencies will be developed and there are uh, two types of interventions one is called the short term competencies development program another one is called the long term competencies development program so that comes under the workforce development training and uh, and learning and development assessing the people and accordingly you make them job fit you make them understand what is the job and the requirement and you make sure that these people fit into this particular job right so this is what which is really required in the organization looking into the competencies and these competencies are having different levels so when we see about the entire competency framework for an organization there are different levels are there so you can call the initial level where person is having just knowledge about that competency he knows how to do the he knows what is the work that is called you can and different organization keep different names for this and uh, maybe the the entry level we can call as a l1 level maybe the person is aware the first level is aware second level we can put there as the as a proficient third level we can put there as a mastery so accordingly different organization and as per different industry there are different levels are there i know that there are organizations are there where the level 8 number number 7 number 8 is also there l7 l8 right so more you go into the number l5 l4 l6 l7 it means the person is much more competent in doing that thing and he is not only capable of doing he is able to make other also teach learn and uh, he can be uh, one of the coach in an organization to handle the new joiners so this is about the competencies and the competency framework right so uh, this is the most important thing in any organization to put in uh, for and this competency framework works and solves multiple purposes this is not only at the entry level but this will be very very helpful for the organization and in the, into the entire life cycle of an employee now uh, i discussed about job description kra to define the role based competencies all you need to know about the kra and the kpi 
so this is what which is the most important thing important thing in an organization we give at the initial level about their kras key result area key performance indicators so when i know in the at the beginning that what is my key result area what i really need to do and bring the result in the organization and what are the key performance indicators are there i can really plan my month i can plan my week i can plan my day so accordingly you know we if if any organization any employees there he can really plan his month so normally when it comes to the month planning irrespective of any level or any uh, function in a, in an organization this kra and kpi is always helps and during that uh, appraisal the most important exercise in an organization now we are moving towards the appraisal only the march and april month so we do this assessment with the, all these employee that what was your kra and kpis are there you give your feedback accordingly their manager will give their feedback and their uh, uh, their next year increment of the the position promotion everything depends upon this kra and kpi so why so how we do in our organization uh, this type of planning so as i shared with you that there are uh, short term and long term and but there are there is something called the mid term also so the current status maybe for short term 1 to 6 month learning interventions we are planning for them and maybe for uh, uh, the the mid term as well as for the long term so this is what the entire plan which is there so month wise we keep all this planning you know and uh, and we put people for this learning interventions right and this is something called uh, uh, the 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 succession planning for the organization the key important identified roles and in each and every role we took two to three three people so whenever the attrition happen we have someone who is already ready to join that, that particular thing it's always better uh, for any role to hire people internally it will uh, create lot of positivity in in the internal organization it will also you know help organization to go to the next level because if you hire a new person a person will come from the different cultural background different you know the uh, the working background fashion style of work and this person will take minimum 3 to 6 month to understand the culture of the organization so this is what which is really required here now the current status the feedback where we conduct this kind of kind of exercise we take feedback from the employee himself his manager and sometimes 360 degree feedback also uh, we we take now in the 360 degree feedback we take employees feedback his manager feedback his colleagues feedback and the people those are reporting to him these all composite feedback will give certain indications when you put together all this this 360 degree feedback along with the psychometric assessment so uh, again what are the goals are there professional and the what are different achievements are there looking into the achievement and the gaps so gap when it comes to the the kra what was the expected level of that particular person into that competency and what is the current performance and there is a something called i shared with all of you the med analysis mastery level is the level which is expected level a stand for the actual where they are currently in the performance and finding out the differences so uh, hope i am uh, hope you are able to understand and comprehend whatever i am sharing with all of you in case if you don't understand any terminologies and you know these jargons please put this in the chat box i would love to address all those questions and the queries so now looking into the change changes into the learning style of the people the digital interventions that is called learning management system the evolved practice the, we do goal setting understanding the goals aligning the goals with the organizational objective now there is a study conducted by harvard let me share with you and i was also part of that study let me share with you that we 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 were a, a, a close group of people that's though we were doing the study that hbr review now it was a study about between the two type, type of types of organization which are uh, the successful organization and the organization those are not very successful or those were those were really struggling to become successful so what they did they asked this this same kind of question to the different group of people in an organization and what was the question the question set of question like you know uh, uh, what are the goals of your particular department right so we have taken the sample size from uh, you know the majority of the industries and uh, not uh, top 5 companies we took 
uh, successful companies and the company those who are not so successful. Now, uh, we found the, the certain voices there. When it comes to voices, why we are I'm saying voices? Because we write these sentences into the inverted commas. We don't change. We don't mix up anything. So whatever people have said, we capture as it is. The findings were the successful organization, they were having some commonalities. What are the commonalities there? They, their, their personal, their departmental goal is always aligned with the organizational goal. So if you go to the, the IT person, he will say something, the goal of my department, which is very much aligned with the organizational goal. If you go to the operation person, they will also say you something. Whereas the failure organizations or not so successful organizations, their goals were completely different compared to the organizational goal. So this clearly indicates, this clearly says when your goals are absolutely aligned with the organizational goal, organization is always on the path of growth. So this was, you know, the finding over there. And that is why, you know, the, the vision of the organization, the vision statement, mission statement, you know, what we what we write, they write uh, HR people, they coin this statement. These statements are not just to put the decorative, you know, the, the names over there, the sentences and the punchline over there. It has should have certain meanings in the organization. It, this really indicates where the organization really wanted to go and achieve something. All right. Hope I am making sense, uh, Shuhel, uh, uh, yeah, and people are able to understand also. Very uh, wonderful uh, insight, uh, because you got the personal insight uh, experiences. Uh, I believe everyone, our, especially our students, can uh, uh, re relate to their, uh, because all of them are working adults, they can work, relate to their academic as well as their in real life situation. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, so, uh, for all the students, my request uh, to all of them. So, I wrote certain articles on my on my LinkedIn. So, if you have a, if you can get an opportunity and the chance, please go to my LinkedIn profile, and there you will find a lot of articles and the post. Especially if you go to the article segment, there are more than 30, 35 articles are there, right? And uh, there are articles on the competency framework. There are articles on the nine box matrix. There are articles on uh, the different HR models. Right. And even if you are literally more interested, there is something uh, on YouTube. Also, my videos are available there. So you can go there and find out Dear Life by Pankaj Sharma. This is my channel name. You will find a lot of HR, uh, you know, the stuff over there. So recently I conducted one workshop on the emotional intelligence. In IIM Bangalore also, I am going to conduct recently the emotional intelligence workshop for uh, their professors and the lecturers. Recently, I met with their directors. He was you know, asking me to, can we conduct this? So uh, on your intelligence also, you will get a lot of content over there. I am also a coach, a master trainer and the coach for instructional design, right? So, and 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 I'm if, fortunately, you know, I work with the organization like GlaxoSmithKline organization and the UCB, these are the multinational organization where I actually implemented all those processes and uh, these learning models, right? So I have lots of, you know, these hands-on experiences, uh, based upon you know the my these organizational interventions there, which gave me a lot of understanding in terms of building uh, overall things. All right. Uh, okay. So now uh, uh, this is what you know the aligning the goals uh, with the organizational ob uh, objectives. So. Their goals, their departmental goals should be very much aligned with the with the goal of the organization. The the most important thing there. Now coming to the larger piece of talent management. Now here, uh, what we are doing in our current organization for each fund, top twenty percent and ten percent. So. For the key role, identified roles, we are making a pool of people for the talent management to meet out these challenges. The pool of people are the identified people, those who are really doing well in their current uh, role, those who are very much keen to learn and they are very much aspiring to go to the next level, right? And they are the key contributor in the overall performance of the organization. Right. So this is what you know. we kept is, is a 20% of the population 
or 10%. So there is a slash 10% uh, also somewhere, you know, where the only very few people are working, you won't get 20% and the 10% people are also okay. And we do their goal setting uh, for the next level and we set their objective and their goals. Right. So these goal setting exercises are done by because by their line managers and uh, we plan the engagement activities for them. Now, these people are very elite people, very elevated people, those who need different type of learning interventions, different type of growth path like this. So uh, we, we identified as per the functional functions and the HODs for the key role. Uh, why the key role is important, I'm saying because they are the they are the, the key people in the organization. Once they leave the organization, there will be a you know, lot, of, lot of waiting period and the time when someone comes and join. Uh, you know the organization that is why it's really important to keep these people ready for the next level all right so this is what uh, we did the goal setting for the operation team nursing team sales team or maybe for the it team and other uh, functions also for 20 percent 20 percent 20 percent this is what we did and uh, to identify the people uh, there are uh, the the format which we prepared which says that the readiness for from that particular person is it really ready to take up the challenges, join, and the learning opportunity which we offer them, and the, the uh, feedback from their managers and feedback from their subordinates and the colleagues. So this is the overall thing which we did, which gave us a lot of understanding and the input. Now functions, talent pool, 20% or 10%, skilling and the certification. Now for skilling and the certification, I would like to share here the, the bigger, you know, the intervention which we did last year. We created a pool of the people and for them, we created a continuous six month learning interventions where we call them for two days of workshop on various competencies and remaining, you know, uh, month, we will put them for the coaching by the external, you know, the experts. So skilling certification, keeping reward and recognition for them, keeping some contest for them. Right, so that they feel that yes, this is not something which organization has done for us. This is what we have achieved. This is because of our hard work, right? So this is what which is which is which is really very much important when you put the organization. Now training effectiveness inception with the LMS learning management system here. Now here the the training effectiveness, whatever the learning intervention you do, is it really helping them? So certain feedback. So there is something called the model, which I would like to introduce here. That is called the Creek Patrick model. So uh, uh, the assignment to all the students today, tonight, please go to the Google and ask about the Creek Patrick model. So Creek Patrick model is having the five levels. Normally people say four levels, but it's the five levels. Uh, so that is called the reaction, learning, behavior, result, and the ROI. These are the five levels, right? So the feedback pre and post assessment, business impact, ROI, manager assessment. So these are the different, you know, the parameters where we measure the training of uh, effectiveness. I am saying training doesn't actually mean the classroom training. It has, you know, the lot of, you know, the assignment, what you give them, the group activity, which you give them, the, the, the project work, which you give them, everything comes under this, this bigger umbrella of call training or the learning interventions, right? And this is called the succession planning overall identifying key position, identifying the key employees, beginning with the high engagement plan, sharing best practices, activities across industries, one to three year plan with the goal setting for each employee, documentation and setting milestones in employee journey. So this is what the overall planning, what we do. And there are monthly sessions. These are the names of the people which we identified and they really contributed really very well, right? So this is what the overall in the nutshell, the learning activities, the uh, the bigger part of the learning management system over there because these people are very you know busy people they may not have time to go through every time in the coming physically and attending so giving them you know putting all the modules on learning management system which will give them the uh, the accessibility anytime or every time you know wherever they are available and they are ready to learn so the group is created functions wise clinical non clinical Right, each unit and function wise admin will be accountable for the overall um, the, the usage of the LMS and modules will be created as per the, uh, the capability on LMS access, access will be given by the super admin. So these are all the, you know, the admin kind of work pertaining to the uh, LMS. So this is the methodology need based program for different functions. 
pre and post assessment for each training. This is very much important to take the assessment because pre and post assessment is what which is really very much required, which will which will help you to understand the needle mover, where were they and where are they currently. Feedback is taken and uh, uh, training impact evaluation conducted. That provides feedback and the activities. Each program is designed by adult learning principle. So there is another word called ALP, adult learning principle. The most important uh, thing to remember always. Uh, supervisor's involvement is must for the workplace in implementation. All training will be captured into the LMS. So this is the overall calendar which we prepare here. I do not want you to go into this calendar. This is the month wise, you know, exactly you are planning when you are planning something for department wise, what are the learning interventions you are bringing in and what are the different people, those who are really responsible here. And there is something called the RASI matrix. I hope you guys are aware about the RASI matrix. Uh, this is the very famous matrix, which speaks about responsibility, accountability, right and uh, this is something you know which hr need to must 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 learn about this so uh, this is about you know the overall thing what we are doing and to mitigate the challenges into into the entire this uh, talent management in the current organization mostly you know if you keep the, the there are three things one one uh, there is a book which is written by daniel goldman and the name of the book called the emotional intelligence 2.0 Daniel Goldman always says, and I always follow uh, the learning from him, uh, that employees are very well performed and engaged and remain with the organization and the brand if you do the three things. Number one is, is giving a regular feedback. Right? What are they, do, are they doing? What are the expectations you want them to do? Number one is employee giving them the right timely feedback. Number two, he said that giving them something which is over about their routine task or the routine skills. So you 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 give them something which is more stretchable as compared to the current thing, whatever they are there they are doing. And third one, he said that looking into the current, you know, the millennials at all, he said that celebrate the small successes. So uh, if someone is really doing pretty well, you need to really call people, applaud them, share the mailers, you know, with them and with the, all the people. And this person will feel more appreciated. And this will create a lot of, you know, the, uh, the workplace learning. So uh, there is a word in the terminology called workplace learning, a lady called Jane Hart. She is uh, the Institute of, of uh, Excellence in London. And uh, she gave this, she is an is a, is a international global leader into the workplace learning, WPL, workplace learning. She said that a lot of learning happens at the workplace. And she shared a lot of best practices when it comes to workplace learning. Maybe, you know, next time in the future, I would love to discuss with all of you about more other, other aspect of uh, the organizational development kind of thing. Uh, in the, but uh, as of now, if we have any question, so I shared with you in the very capsule format what all uh, the challenges are there and how we are mitigating all these challenges. So my apologies if I used any jargon. I avoid using any jargon, but there are certain terminology which really comes to the mind, which we practice in our day-to-day -day, day -day life. And uh, whenever you do anything, you know, globally or maybe locally. Yeah, I'm open for the questions. I would love to answer your questions. Please feel free to ask questions. Thank you. And students, any questions or any clarification or any comments you would like to share? So there is a question. How is artificial intelligence changing the way organization identify and rec recruit top talent from uh, Chase Lava? Very, very good. Uh, so very good question. See, uh, this this technology is really changing everything. Or maybe, you know, it is having something to do in each and every segment. Uh, as a healthcare organization, now I'll, I'll ask you, answer your question in two ways. One is what we are doing currently in the organization and what is the international scenario. In the healthcare space, we are, we are at very, very initial stage in terms of... Uh, imbibing the, the usage and the benefit and taking the advantages of the technology. Uh, we are up to the LMS or maybe the LXP only. We have not yet explored the, all the, the advantages of the technology. However, 
there are IT organizations, there are some other organizations where it is used extensively from hiring. So their hiring happens because of, you know, there is something called the ATS, the finding the keyword in the CVs of the people and you filter out that the, the, the selected number of people, right? So AI has larger role to play. You know the how chat GPT is used extensively, how prompt engineering is keep on coming, you know, in the picture that Right, yes, sir. I hope uh, that answer your question. Okay, we've got one more from Charles. Apologies, I think uh, the speaker got some issues. All right, good journey. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. I think there's some technical issues. Yeah. All right. Okay. There is another question from Charles in the chat box. So sorry, actually my laptop battery got uh, drained. No. Suddenly, I I I I realized that. All right. So um, uh, what is the current state of? Yeah. So so I was talking about the usage of uh, artificial intelligence. So there are there are organizations those are really using this artificial intelligence very extensively, and uh, this is what you know the way of life in the future. The second question from yeah yeah the second question from is yeah, uh, yeah. from Charles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Charles. What is the question? Can you please? Uh, okay, the question it for is: me? What is the current state of employee engagement and well-being in companies in these days, especially a uh, post-pandemic, uh, and global conflict environment, etc.? How should HR professional respond in addition to the total management? A uh, very, very good question, Charles. Uh, thanks for asking this question. So we we have currently, you know, the collaboration with one of the organization, which is giving the online counseling to our, uh, you know, all the employees. Say, for example, I am, I am a person who is having some problem at home, some dispute or some argument in the family, and I am absolutely frustrated. Once I come at my job, I am already, you know, mentally depressed. And once I'm at, at my job, and I, there are also the job related pressures are there to bring the numbers and the goals, meeting the goals and the timelines. So I feel, you know, that that I am the person who is absolutely frustrated. So then that's the time, you know, if someone is absolutely in the in the anxiety, depression, or maybe any mental sickness, a person can just pick up a phone and talk to a counselor. So these counselors are the psychologists, clinical psychologists who understand the problem and who maintain the confidentiality of, of the issue and the topic, whatever they discuss. They never disclose to anyone in the organization. And they really help these organizations, these people to come out from that kind of, you know, the mindset. Otherwise, what you said is absolutely right, that the people need to be very well taken care for the well-being, right? Yeah. So there's a right. question from Mustak. Uh, what are the challenges and how to segregate talent in a highly competitive environment? What kind of metrics can be used to segregate? Great. What are the challenges? How to segregate talent in a highly competitive environment? So uh, uh, you need to really understand you know, the, which, org which industry you belong 
and what are the best practices are going on. So what we do, we invite externals to conduct the session. So they come as a guest, you know, speaker in the organization. They share their perspective. They share their best practices. And nowadays, you know, uh, getting best practices for any organization is no more a, a hidden game. You can find it out. It is available everywhere. So, uh, and there are, there are right, you know, the good institutes are also there. Those are giving you a lot of inputs when it comes to the changing the things. The important thing is, are you really changing your own strategy as per the need of the people, environment, and your surroundings? That's the important thing. And, 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 and it's not the one size fits all that you make one strategy in a year and it will go for two, two years or three years. Every time you need to be flexible in terms of bringing the change for the betterment. How, how better we can make and change these strategies. Yeah, I hope I was able to answer your question. Yeah, please. Uh, there's complete. a two more from Engineer yeah. Ibrahim. He said, how can we uh, best way to measure the employee performance? Employee performance. Yeah. yeah so keep, One of the keep best uh, way. this best way. So keep, you know, the employee engaged. Employee engaged could be, you know, if, if, if today is my birthday, the moment I reach at my office, I should, if I, I'll get, you know, the chocolate and the, the flower and the greeting card and the bouquet, I feel, you know, you know, I'm very special for the organizations. And there are organizations those who are doing all this, right? Keep this, this small achievements and the small events of the life of each and every employee. Celebrate that, number one. Number two, uh, what are the, the different engagement plans you have for them? Right. So share, you know, these, these all, all kind of, uh, you know, events, right. So like Women's Day, like any festival, like Eid, like Diwali. So celebrate this in the, in the organization and uh, always, you know, keep something for their, their overall academic uh, development. So what are the, the academic development sessions in the year? If you can conduct, you know, three to four sessions, especially for them, apart from their job, apart from their functional competencies. Like I, I conducted, you know, the, the emotional intelligence workshop for all my CEOs. So they really felt that this is something, you know, which we, we never heard about this. And there are five important comp components. Everybody, you know, is, is trying to change others in the workplace, in the, in the, in the personal life also. I, this person is not like that. He should have not done this. He should have not done that. And people are very much expert in making judgments about others. So the first uh, important, you know, the first step of the emotional intelligence says, says that the self-awareness. Are you really aware about yourself? So when you put them for some, some or other this, this type of learning, they will really feel something, you know, which is, which is helping them not only the, to become good in their, their professional journey as well as uh, in their personal life. So keep all these type of practices, engagement activities, and you should have something, some or other thing, you know, for for entire group of people. Entire group of people, you can't, you know, keep on conducting this program only for the key stakeholders, key people, HODs, even for the, the ground executives, those are doing the job over there. So keep always, you know, uh, this type of plan so that you address the, the larger need or needs of the people. Yeah. Question is from Lillian. In succession planning, how can we identify the key positions? Our key positions are, you need not to do a lot of work to identify the key positions. Key positions are very well known to the organization. Like, for example, if I'll ask you, if you are, you are building your own organization, who are the all people you would like to hire? You should have one finance person. You should have one HR person, you should have one IT person, you should have one, you know, the operation person. These are the five, six people are there. Those are considered to be as a, as a key, key people key in, the, in an organization initially. But as and when the size of the organization becomes bigger, you will be having more people key identified roles. And it is, it is very simple to identify the key people there. Those are the decision makers. They, we call that as a DMU, decision making unit, decision maker units, you know, the individuals. So uh, this is very simple to identify. You need not to do a lot of work to identify these key people. Yeah. Uh, next uh, is actually additional question from Mustak that uh, uh, how can organization address concerns around job displacement and rescaling as a result of AI in talent management? Uh, rescaling of the employee is 
is is is should be the part of the the lnd uh, lnd function in the organization uh, there is something which is called uh, as i shared with you that the initial competency which you are looking to hire people but after that what is there with you what is there with people can really learn while they are coming to your organizations so for reskilling lot of uh, interventions which you can do you can collaborate with lot of management colleges iims xlri or maybe you know some uh, individual experts and the coaches there right there are a lot of icf certified coaches are there international coaching federation certified coaches are there those who really gives a lot of good insights right so uh, keep this you know the reskilling part and a special thing here understand what your organization journey the past history of the organization anyone who is joining the organization should not come with the new thought and which will you know uh, digress from the actual you know the motto of your organization so these are the few things you know which if we just keep in the mind you can keep people uh, really engaged in the reskilling of the of the people there yeah the next question is from ibrahim again he said uh, how does the organization identify and attract top talent and uh, what are the obstacles encountered in the in this process what obstacle encountered so this is called the, the poaching of the talent so yeah. if you are there you know in the talent to if you if you how what is your hiring process you hire through social media you hire through linkedin you hire through nokri.com what are the portals indeed you know what are the different monster what are the different portals which you are hiring and always you know uh, there are certain things are there when i discuss these things with my chro and my my ceo they always say there should not be a lot of changes now if you go through the cvs of the people you will be able to identify that why this person is making change in the their their organization after every one year so there is no stability uh, you know so there are certain you know the things are there which you can really identify uh, especially the the linkedin profile if you go through the people uh, and this is also the another area of uh, intervention there the linkedin profile people do not know how to make so linkedin profile is your shop if you go you know how your shop is beautifully decorated you know the lightings and the and the the, the flowers and everything you know anybody is would love to enter where the the performance the, the the perfume fragrance is there inside now everybody would love to enter, uh, enter it should be neat and clean so like this your linkedin profile should really reflect that you are a very systematic organized person and a uh, lot of things are there in the linkedin profile you know which a person need to really understand which speaks about your overall personality so linkedin is your overall shop where people comes and once they come would they would will, will they come again into your shop to find it out whenever they are there for the shopping shopping means the hiring i am saying don't mistake shopping with any other thing you know the hiring of the an, an, an employee so identify the right talent in the market and uh, if you re really would like to have the best talent you need to be ready to give them the best so when i say give them the best the monetary benefit why people will change so first of all people change uh, because of the culture of the organization because of their managers if i am not satisfied in my current organization as far as far as my remuneration is concerned my perks are concerned right if something comes on my way which will give me the extraordinary increment right and some people even change for the learning also right so 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 if you are working in an organization for 3 years and there is sufficient time you have given to the organization to learn everything about that organization some people change for the learning also what is there is nothing new for me to learn in this organization let me change the industry let me change the organization let me have some some more learnings right so this is these are the the different nuances are there how people make decisions to change but i hope this is the last question what are the challenges of aligning talent management strategies within overall business goals and objectives very very critical question and very very important question thank you so much for asking this question uh, uh, she is uh, she is lover she is lover or something okay all right uh, so uh, she is lover if you are again you know i shared with you the the case study of harvard which uh, speaks about if your goals or if your function goal is not aligned with the organization organization will never be succeed be able to succeed right so uh, always you know when it comes to you know the goals each and everything you know goals of each and every function should align with the organizational goal if it is not there is a huge disconnect and uh, you can you can think about five people team and the, every all of these five people are going to the different directions will they be combined together join together absolutely no 
so make sure that they they move towards the right direction holding the hand of each other right so that then only they can reach to the final destination or the final place over there which is called the goal so your goal organizational goal should be you know you should very well aware about the what the organization is really required and that is why you know you you again whatever you do there is something called keeping the string stakeholders with you so always you know if if any small or big thing you do go to the stakeholders when it comes to the stakeholders the key people there you know go to the your ceo talk to him this is what i am doing here is there anything change you want me to do is there anything which i need to really include or is there anything which i need to really elevate from here so that is why a lot of discussions meetings interventions is really required and keeping them informed is always there is something called the 6d model so again i am bringing lot of models here because you know everything you know whenever you ask questions something popped up in my mind and then that that's really help us uh, so there is something called 6d model in the in the instructional design which speaks about you know uh, uh, everything about you know whenever you do any small intervention any change or any learning interventions always keep the stakeholders aligned with them always inform them this is what i am doing so if you are informing them you are very well connected with them and they know uh, what your org function is doing there are many you know the the hr people are there they are working in an organization but nobody is aware their visibility is very less right so people feel i even i i heard the 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 the, the background noise also from the people that hr is the function who do, who do, do nothing right so hr has a bigger and the larger role to play that is why we we call him as a business partner nowadays right so any movie you can think of which is a super duper hit movie everybody knows the hero heroine actress villain but nobody knows the background people those who make them successful so that's what the role of hr in this bigger you know the the success of the organization <laughs> hope i am able to uh, give the right metaphor uh, just to make you understand and learn. thank you mr sharma uh, prof naga uh, prof uh, sundar uh, any uh, uh, questions or any, any you would like to share anything so much uh, uh, mr anuj and it is a, it was a really great session and this morning only we had a session on uh, the opening on talent management introduction basically to our students and i was talking to them about hr is a business partner so this is actually really value addition session for our students and of course the students from the world you know who are attending all over the world they will be they, they would have learned a lot from you today it's a great session pangaj sir and i'm really really thankful to you and thank you so much and we look forward more from you sir yeah thank you so much for a wonderful opportunity to interact with all of you and i am really very much keen to share a lot of my experiences from the case study what we do with harvard and that there is something called the myth and the reality reality so what people think and what the reality is when you do the this all research you will be able to understand and learn the new uh, you know the dimensions of the things are happening thank you so much i really enjoyed uh, uh, you know uh, interacting with all of you it was virtual but uh, however you know the question you asked which was really very engaging question for me and i really love to answer the complicated questions you know all my you know the the memory is having you know its own way of working it popped up whenever you 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 uh, knock at that particular spot yeah so thank you so much for uh, the wonderful opportunity yeah prof uh, dr costa would like to comment anything or share any your experience Uh, Dr. Ariva, you'd like to share your comments? Can I add one more comment, Dr. Sukhail, if you allow sure. me? Sure, yeah. sure, go ahead. Because, uh, you know, you know, I think uh, Mr. Pangaj knows personally, I was involved in uh, research, uh, you know, in talent management for the last six, seven years. Even more than that, it's continuing. Uh, somebody asked about the engaging the top talents and attracting top talents how to attract them i about to answer by the day by the time uh, mr pangaj has popped in then i i wanted to stop my answer so that was really good uh, question someone asked from this group like uh, employee branding is something popping up so much today and the people are uh, talking about it and if you wanted to attract right brand that employee branding that means that brand value is something which we have to talk about that's where your business strategy 
and the talent strategy that we are lined thoroughly and we have to work on it. And a lot more to talk about it when we have more time, we will discuss about it in the future. And thank you so much, everyone, and special thanks to Dr. Suhail for the opportunity for our students and uh, Mr. Pangaj and everyone, all the participants, the wonderful questions you have asked. Uh, really, really, it, uh, it's an enlightening session for us. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, the Prof. Uh, Dr. Sunda, and uh, all the participants. Uh, my special appreciation to Mr. Pankaj Sharma. Uh, thank you for your time and sharing uh, the real life experiences, uh, which will be much beneficial to our students in their academic and their real life uh, experiences. I believe they would be able to implement it, right? So yeah, we will arrange uh, more uh, seminars or webinars like this, and uh, we look forward to joining all of you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Pankaj Sharma again, and that's all for tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.